Hello everyone, and if you're following my YouTube channel, you know that I am doing a lecture series for integral calculus. And on my previous video, I presented to you some basic techniques of integrating trigonometric functions. So in this video, I'll be showing you some special techniques of integrating powers of trigonometric functions. And allow me to start with uh, th this uh, list of differentiation formulas and integration formulas for various trigonometric functions. And let's start our discussion by this example say if we have integral of sine cube 2x cosine 2x dx and we know that sine and cosine go along together as part of the integrand and then you notice that sine is raised to the third power <clears throat> and cosine is raised to the first power so one straightforward substitution here is that we let you be equal to sine 2x and differentiating you now have 2 cosine 2x dx is our du and you see here this is cosine 2x dx and then we don't want 2 here so we just multiply it by one half so that will become one half du equals cosine 2x dx and then <clears throat> the integral of sine cube 2x cosine 2x dx can now be written as one half times the integral of u cube du. And then integrating, we know that the integral of u cube du is u to the 4 over 4. Then you just multiply it by 1 half and then you add c at the end. Then simplifying, you now have 1 8. Then you write it back to the original variable. You know that u is sine 2x. So we have sine to the 4 2x plus c. And then this whole process can be generalized if we utilize this integral of sine to the n ax cosine ax dx where n and a element of real number. So here, <clears throat> by applying the same technique, you know that u is equal to sine ax and that du is a cosine ax dx. And again, this is your cosine ax dx. And then you just multiply it by 1 over a du that is equal to cosine ax dx. So which means the integral of sine raised to an ax cosine ax dx is just equal to 1 over a <clears throat> times the integral of u to the n du. Integrating, you know that the integral of u to the n du is u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And then we can now have 1 all over a times the quantity n plus 1. You just multiply this 2. And then u, we express it as sine ax and then raised to n plus 1 plus c. And therefore, we can generalize that the integral of sine raised to n ax cosine ax dx is equal to 1 all over a times the quantity n plus 1 times sine raised to n plus 1 ax plus c. And then we can apply this formula to integrate sine cube 2x cosine 2x by just looking for the value of n okay you know that n is equal to 3 and that a is equal to 2 then uh, applying this formula you know that the integral of sine cube 2x cosine of 2x dx is equal to 1 all over a times n plus 1 then copy sine raised to n plus 1 and then copy the parameter 2x and then you add c. So finally, you have 3 plus 1 is 4 times 2 it's 8. So we have 1 over 8. Then copy sine to the 3 plus 1 is 4. And then copy 2x and then you add c. And we get the same answer. <clears throat> Another one. Say so by applying this formula, we shall integrate sine raised to negative 2 third 3 fourth x cosine 3 fourth x dx. Here, we know that n is equal to negative 2 third negative two-third, and that a is equal to three-fourth. And then we shall now have the integral of sine raised to negative two-third, three-fourth of x, cosine three-fourth of x dx is in fact equal to <clears throat> one all over, this is a, that's a times n plus one. Then you copy sine raised to negative two-third plus one, then you copy three-fourth x plus c. And you know that this negative two-third plus one is equal to one-third, multiply it with three-fourth, so you shall have one all over three-fourth times one-third, then you copy sine, negative two-third plus one is one-third, you copy three-fourth x plus c. And finally, this is now equal to four, okay? So this is Three, you can just drop it off and then you have now one over one fourth and this is equal to four okay so we shall have four sine raised to one third three fourth of x plus c and that's the integral of sine raised to negative two third three fourth of x cosine three fourth of x dx another one let's say we will do it in cosine okay <clears throat> again by straightforward substitution we can now let you be equal to cosine 3x. You know that the derivative of 
uh, cosine 3x is negative 3 sine 3x dx. And you see this sine 3x dx, so we need to avoid this negative 3 on the right side. So we just multiply it by negative 1 third du is equal to sine 3x dx. And then that integral of cosine to the fourth 3x sine 3x dx is equal to negative one third times the integral of u to the four du. Yeah, that's u to the four because this is cosine to the fourth 3x. Integrating, <clears throat> so you'll have negative one third. The integral of u to the four du is u to the five over five plus c and then we shall have negative one over 15. That's three times five. Then u is cosine cosine to the 5, 3x plus c. And then again, we can generalize this as the integral of cosine to the n ax, sine ax dx is equal to negative because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you have negative 1 all over a times the quantity n plus 1 cosine raised to n plus 1 ax plus c. Okay, we have... Say we have cosine raised to negative 7, 1 half of x times sine 1 half of x dx. And here, we can now say that n equals negative 7 and a equals 1 half. Applying the formula, okay, we shall now have negative 1 all over a, that's 1 half, times negative 7 plus 1, that's n plus 1. <clears throat> then you copy cosine, negative 7 plus 1, 1 half of x plus c. And then simplifying, you know that this is equal to negative 6 multiplied by 1 half, that's negative 3. Remember that this is negative, so we shall now have positive 1 third cosine raised to negative 6. This is negative 6. Then you copy the parameter 1 half x and then you add c. So this is the integral of cosine raised to negative 7, 1 half of x sine 1 half of x dx. <clears throat> All right. So this time, let's uh, take a look on the powers for tangent. So you know that uh, a trigonometric function of the form tangent can be integrated if there is secant squared on the integrand. So in this case, we have tangent to the 4, 3x, secant squared 3x dx. And by direct substitution, we let u be equal to tangent 3x. And you know that du is 3 secant squared 3x dx. And remember, this is secant squared 3x alone. So you have 1 third du <clears throat> is equal to secant squared 3x dx. And then... The integral of tangent to the 4, 3x, secant squared 3x dx is in fact equal to 1 third u to the 4 du. And then integrating, so you have 1 third u to the 5 over 5 plus c. And finally, you shall have 1 over 15 tangent to the 5, 3x plus c. And then... Again, to generalize the formula, I'll be using the integral of tangent to the n ax, secant squared ax dx. And then again, by applying the same procedure, we shall have okay, u equals tangent ax and then 1 over a du equals secant squared ax dx. And then the new transformation will become 1 over a integral of u to the n du and that leads us to 1 over a times u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And finally, you can just replace u by tangent ax. So we have the integral of tangent to the n ax secant squared ax dx is equal to 1 all over a times the quantity n plus 1 times tangent raised to n plus 1 ax plus c. Okay. Using this formula, we can now integrate Okay, in the easiest possible way, the integral of tangent cubed 7x secant squared 7x dx. And then we know that n is equal to 3 and a equals 7. Therefore, we have <clears throat> the integral of tangent cubed 7x secant squared 7x dx is in fact equal to 1 all over 7 times the quantity 3 plus 1 tangent raised to 3 plus 1 7x plus c. And that will lead us to 1 over 28, that's 3 plus 1 times 7, yeah? Tangent to the 4, 7x plus c. And then similarly for the integral of cotangent to the n ax, cos secant squared ax dx, since you know that the derivative of cotangent ax is negative, we just simply affix the minus sign in front. So that's negative 1 all over a times the quantity n plus 1, cotangent to the n plus 1 ax plus c. And then for the group of secant and tangent, say we shall generate it of the form integral of secant to the n ax tangent ax dx. And you know that when you let u 
be equal to secant ax, okay, we know that its derivative is a secant ax tangent ax dx. And then we have 1 over a du is equal to secant ax tangent ax dx. Now, unfortunately, okay, so you this, this tangent ax do not have any secant ax before, uh, I mean, on, on its side. So what we need to do now is to... L to factor out one secant ax from secant to the n ax, and that leads us to the integral of secant to the n minus 1 ax, secant ax tangent ax dx. So this secant ax tangent ax is now our 1 over a du. And that leads us to 1 over a times the integral of u raised to n minus 1 du, and that leads 1 over a u to the n over n. So since we have u to the n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1. And that leads us to u to the n over a to the n. And finally, the integral of secant to the n ax tangent ax dx is equal to 1 over a n secant to the n ax plus c. And that also happens for the integral of cos secant to the n ax cotangent ax dx. And since the derivative of cos secant ax is negative a cos secant ax cotangent ax dx, and that leads us to negative 1 over a du equals cos secant ax cotangent ax dx. And finally, Okay, so we will factor out one cos secant ax from cos secant to the n ax, and then that leads us to this expression. Okay, and then by change of variable, this is now equal to negative 1 over a integral of u to the n minus 1 du, applying the same procedure. So we can now say that the integral of cos secant to the n ax cotangent ax dx is equal to negative. 1 over a cos secant to the n ax plus c. And then we shall illustrate this two uh, generated formula to integrate, say we have integral of secant to the 5, 2x, tangent 2x, dx. So we now see that n is equal to 5 and a is equal to 2. And then we have the integral of secant to the 5, 2x, tangent 2x, dx is equal to 1 all over 2 times 5, Okay, that's n. And then secant to the 5, 2x plus c. And finally, that gives us 1 over 10 secant to the 5, 2x plus c. Another example is for cosecant raised to negative 4, 3x cotangent 3x dx. Here, we see that n is equal to negative 4 and a is equal to 3. Then using the formula... We can now see that the integral of cos secant raised to negative 4, 3x cotangent 3x dx is equal to negative 1 over a, that's 1 over 3 times negative 4, cos secant to the negative 4, 3x plus c. And finally, that leads us to 1 over 12, okay, cos secant to the negative 4, 3x plus c.